Good morning. Good to see everyone here this morning. Good to be here. God is so good. So, so good to us. Look forward to this day, first day of the week, where we come together collectively and worship God in the spirit as well as in truth. Um, firstly, want to welcome all visitors, either uh, here, uh, presently here or virtually. Uh, you are our honored guests. We're glad that you took time out of your schedule to come and worship with the Utica Church of Christ. And we'll ask that um, um, after service that you would um, stick around so we can extend the uh, right hand of fellowship to you and, and welcome and get to know you a little better. Uh, hopefully at this time everyone has uh, secured communion packets. They are in the back. If you don't have one, you could raise your hands. We'll make sure one of the brethren will come and give it to you. Uh, for those virtually, those who may be shut in, can't get out, if you are in need of communion packets, you can um, let one of us know and we can get those to you as well. And as I go through the announcements, I want to silence everyone to silence their electronic devices. Um, so that um, our service can go uninterrupted. We want to encourage everyone um, to click on the link at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. We have the Wednesday night um, Bible class. Um, that link is on the website. We encourage you to do that. Um, as well as our Sunday school um, is 9 a.m. every uh, Lord's Day. Uh, 9 a.m. here at the building. You are encouraged to attend that as well. Okay, in our prayers, Jim Neisler is requesting prayers for his son, Kenneth, who has stage four cancer. We want to continue, please continue to pray um, for him. Uh, Mary Casango is undergoing radiation. Please pray for her in that regard. Um, Jamie Brady, Chris's cousin, um, understand that he may be in need of a second heart transplant. Please continue to pray for him. We're asking the church to continue to pray for Sister uh, Marilyn Wendy's daughter. Continue to pray for her, please. Uh, Julie's son is also going through um, tests, and we're going to ask that uh, we continue to pray for him as well. Um, and as you know, we have a congregational meeting um, today um, after service. Hopefully everyone has um, um, put that on their schedule and plan to attend that. It is very, very important that we have uh, the participation of the congregation for these meetings. Um, it does us no good, serves us nothing if nobody, uh, or not everyone sticks around for that. We need your input, we need your prayers and, and guidance in that event. So that's today, <clears throat> excuse me, after morning uh, worship. Also men's training class. Uh, the next men's training class will be on, I need the date. Paul, I can't see that, brother. <laughs> the 8th. Um, on the 8th, that will be October the 8th. Please, brethren, brethren, please mark that on your calendars um, to come out to support that event um, as well. That is all the announcements that I do have at this time. Um, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to um, worship God in spirit and in truth. Let's go to God in prayer. Beloved Father in heaven, a few of your faithful servants come to you just now, bowing, giving thanks unto you, Father, for this very day. We're thankful, dear God, just now to be on time side of life with the opportunity to work out our soul's salvation. Dear God, we give you the honor and praise that you deserve, Father. We Realize how good you are to us, Father, despite of us. 
you love us anyway, Father, and we're so thankful. Just now, Heavenly Father, as we go into this service, we pray that you would be with each and every one of us, Heavenly Father, that we will render the best service that we can unto you, give you the praise and honor that you deserve, Father. We're praying for maybe members who might be on their way still, that they arrive here safely so that they can participate in this service as well. We're asking, dear God, that you would be with our minister, Brother Brian, as he will shortly come before us to break unto us the bread of life. We'd ask, dear God, that you would continue to crown his head with wisdom and knowledge, Father. Help him to recall the things which he has studied, to present them in such a way, Father, where we'll all be blessed by the message. Father, continue to give his family health and strength. And we ask, dear God, not only for him, but for all those who are awaiting test results and going through um, uh, physical therapy and rehab and all those things, Father, just be with them. Those who are in the hospital, those who are uh, still suffering from COVID and, and any illness, dear God, we pray that you would just bless them in a special way. Heavenly Father, we pray for each member here, each family that is represented here. You know everything about us, Father. You know what we're going through, maybe privately, Father, and we just pray that you would get us through those things, Father. May we rely on you for all the answers and be submissive to your word, Father. May we continue to pray for one another as you have instructed us, dear God. Sometimes we don't realize what people are going through, Father, but we pray that, again, that you would bless us with those things that we stand in need of. Father, we pray for our elderly members, our youth, uh, married couples, widows, those that are single, um, that you would just bless us all, Father. And again, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would be with us in every song, every prayer, and everything that we do, Father, would be pleasing and acceptable unto thee. Dear Father, please forgive us what we have fallen short. Forgive us for those sins. Turn your back on them, Father, never to remember them again, but help us, dear God, to strive to know better and do better according to your word. This is our prayer that we ask in the glorious name of our Lord, our Savior, and our Master, Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. Good morning. Turn your books to hymn number 470. <clears throat> hymn number 470.
This morning's scripture reading will be taken from Proverbs chapter 19, verses 2 and 3. Proverbs 19, 2 and 3. Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will Hasty feet miss the way. A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Will you please go to the Lord with me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you. We thank you, dear Lord, for your love, your infinite wisdom, Lord. And we're thankful for the word, Lord, this precious Bible you have left for us to be a guide for us, Lord, as we navigate through this world, helping us to become Christians, and then once saved, Lord, how to become better and grow as Christians, dear Lord. It is all these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, turn with me to hymn number 157. 157. We'll sing the first, fourth, and fifth verse. 157. First, fourth, and
privilege to gather around this table this morning. I'd like to share a passage with you from Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. I'll be reading from the ESV. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now we have we that are were are, I'm sorry, now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now receive reconciliation. You would take your packet and open the top layer, exposing the bread, and bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful, dear Lord, for the privilege we have as your children to gather around this table, commune with you, dear Lord, through your Son. We are thankful for the opportunity to partake of this bread, a symbol of your Son's body that was given for us, dear Lord, on that cross. We pray that as we partake of this bread, dear Lord, we'll do it in a manner well-pleasing in your sight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Now, if you would, peel back the second layer, exposing the cup. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning again thankful, dear Lord, for the opportunity to gather around this table, to partake of this cup, dear Lord, your Son's blood that was shed for our sins. We pray, dear Lord, that as we partake of this cup, we'll understand and know that It is his blood that daily cleanses us, dear Lord. We pray that you will bless us as we partake of it, that we will do it in a manner well-pleasing in your sight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. That concludes the Lord's Supper. At this time, we have the opportunity to give back as we've been prospered. Let's go to God in prayer once again. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you thankful, dear Lord, for all the many blessings you give us each and every day. For the blessing, dear Lord, of the ability to earn a living. The blessing, dear Lord, to just live day to day in this world. We pray that you will continue to help us understand, dear Lord, that everything we have is truly a blessing from you. We pray that the money collected here will be used in a way that will bring glory unto your name, dear Lord. We pray that we will all be cheerful givers. These things we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Please turn and mark your song books to hear number 602. 602 will be the song of invitation. Once you have that marked, turn with me to 521. 521. If you're able, please stand.
say good morning to you. Tell you how great it is to be here. Indeed, how great it is to be able to come out and worship our God, spirit and truth, to be able to, as Brother Dave said, have in the written word God's pattern of worship for our lives and where we can render up worship in a way that pleases him, God's pattern for living, that we can go day to day in a way uh, that is accordance to God's will. We are uh, indeed truly blessed to be God's people. And there ought to be, again, a great joy uh, in that fact that we have direction for our lives. <laughs> uh, Marvin uh, mentioned that we have a congregational meeting, and uh, he stressed uh, the importance of, of all of us attending that particular meeting. And I would uh, agree with that uh, statement and that sentiment. Uh, and because I believe that we will have a host of things to discuss, um, just give you a few thoughts this morning and then um, the lesson will be yours and, and we can get on with the Lord's business. This morning I want to talk to you on the subject of desire without knowledge. Desire without Knowledge, if you would, go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you again and we praise you for blessing us to be here. We are so grateful and we cannot thank you enough, Lord, for giving us life this morning, Lord, giving us a purpose and giving us the first day of the week where we can worship you, Lord, and become the best version of ourselves, Lord, by worshiping the God that created us. We're so thankful. We pray now that as we study your word together that our minds are focused and that we have prepared our hearts and that they are receptive to receive your word and that uh, through meekness, Lord, we are willing and ready to grow from your word. We pray that we are learning by faith the importance to look past the speaker with his weaknesses and shortcomings and that we look to you knowing that everything that is good and right and eternal and true uh, belong to you and all the mistakes belong to men and to the speaker. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. In Philippians chapter 1, verse number 9, the inspired writer teaches, Paul does, that knowledge must accompany our love. Paul says that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge. And then he says it with full insight to help you to determine what is best. And so we see from the inspired apostle that if we are to produce the harvest of our righteous God, then we have to uh, make sure that our love is accompanied by knowledge, by knowledge. In 2 Peter chapter number 1, the apostle Peter tells us that knowledge, again, is the thing that must be added to our virtue, the idea of virtue, this moral excellence. Some of the translations may use the word goodness, that Peter says, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. He, he talks about how knowledge must accompany uh, this particular moral excellence, along with acquiring other graces that he describes here. If we are going to have the type of intimacy with the Lord Jesus uh, that the scriptures call us and that the scriptures really uh, teach us that we are capable of having knowledge in supporting moral excellence. Now, knowledge alone, and I believe that we all know this, that knowledge alone in any area of life is, is often uh, insufficient, but throughout the scriptures we see that knowledge is necessary. Knowledge is necessary and is often the completion to many areas in life. Knowledge is. That knowledge is often the thing that determines whether or not we will experience success or whether or not we will experience some level or some type of ruin uh, from the lack of that particular knowledge to and applied to a particular thing. I think a, a very powerful example of that found in scripture is 2 Samuel uh, chapter number 6 where David has this desire to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem and because David lacked knowledge of the situation because really David had the opportunity to have knowledge but he did not strive for it ultimately uh, it ruined, uh, followed David's desire. 
Knowledge is the comprehension. It's often defined as the comprehension of facts. Uh, knowledge, if we define it, it is the successful attaining of facts it, or holding on to or keeping certain truths, whether, whatever subject that it may be, whether it's scientific or whatever it is, knowledge is attaining and holding on and keeping uh, the knowledge of those or the, the, the truth of those things and the facts concerning those particular issues. And so when we get to this particular proverb, this particular inspired saying that is expressed by the book of wisdom, the Bible says, and the King James Version puts it this way, also, or even, is a better way of saying it, that their soul be without knowledge. In other words, the soul that is without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. In other words, the writer expresses an individual or one striving through life without knowledge, striving for this and striving uh, in areas of life void of knowledge or the proper knowledge or one in a sense he's describing neglecting this knowledge. Therefore, the New Revised Version translation translates it this way, desire without knowledge is not good. Desire without knowledge is not good, and one who moves too hurriedly misses the way. So like love, as we see in Philippians chapter 1 verse 9, and like virtue or goodness in 2 Peter chapter 1, desire, absent of knowledge, diminishes even the greatest efforts. Knowledge without desire, desire without knowledge, should we say, it, it leads to oftentimes a trouble. It needs to be said that before an individual, in other words, should ever chase a desire that is in one's heart, and before one pursues certain longings of one's heart, knowledge of the necessary things must be possessed. The necessary knowledge must be acquired, must be attained. The proper investigation and a healthy Sincere research must precede one's pursuit to fulfill one's wants or one's desires. It's not enough for us to just have a desire or to have a want or to have a longing and just to, as the writer says, to go out and to chase it and to try to acquire it without what? The proper research, the proper knowledge, the proper uh, pursuit of an understanding concerning those particular issues. But what we often see as a reality in our world is that Folk don't accept this particular uh, truth in the world. Individuals rush quickly toward a desire and prematurely in order to satisfy themselves, they often go out and try to grab hold of things without the proper knowledge. And oftentimes this pursuit and this desire and this uh, desire without knowledge is inspired, for example, from many things. Number one, it may be inspired uh, from the false and glorified world of social media. We live in a world where, where everything is put online. We see people and their, their ideal and what they want to promote on, on, online and in social media about what their life entails and what their life consists of. And many times there are folk who look at that and they begin to develop in their minds a different situation than what is uh, really the reality of their life and they begin to pursue a particular desire because it's been plastered on social media and they try to strive for this and they long for these things and ultimately they find that without knowledge that it's not what they expected. Oftentimes it's inspired from an over concentration of and a focusing on an individual's life, the life of their peers. We have the tendency as human beings to see the people around us and those who, are, who are, are, are very close to us and want the life that they have instead of, as we said last week, being content with what we have. So folk look at the life of their peers and they look at the life of other individuals and they strive and they desire and they long for certain things and they pursue them without what? Without the proper knowledge. And then there's just this bad counsel that we see in the world today where folk just listen to individuals who themselves don't know and so individuals who don't know but have this desire listen to folk who are ignorant of the, the trappings of things in life and so they listen to bad counsel and they themselves go out in this pursuit. See, and all of these are from Satan. 
They're avenues that Satan uses to get men to neglect the proper knowledge and the proper attaining of knowledge and learning that is needed in life for us to be successful whenever we're trying to pursue a particular thing, whenever our, our longings and our desires uh, would cause us to focus on a particular thing. Notice how in this saying what the writer of this proverb says is the result of a desire absent of knowledge. What's the result of it? In other words, he says that the individual does what hurries to satisfy this goal and this desire. But also what? There is the falling short. He says they missed the way in the New Revised Version. They missed the way. See, we see things like this in, in, in issues of life, for example, like, like marriage. Individuals look at the folk who are married, they, they have this idea of what marriage is supposed to be about. They don't really research about how difficult it is, and so they do what? A lot of times young people and, and, and older people run out to get married, married without really understanding all that in marriage entails. So they go out, and then when marriage is not what they expect, they do what? They go and run out and chase the desire to do what? To get divorced. This is just how our world is. Think about the business world and the business arena, how folk look at something and they have a desire in terms of business to go out and chase a thing and not really knowing or understanding that, that particular, the aspects of that business or how things are run, but they pursue it and then ultimately it leads to ruin. Or one's career, one's future, same idea and attitude. Young people who, who, who want to see the world and look at the world as if they are able to handle the world and, and many times when they are too young to face the trappings of this world, to understand what is happening and what the dangers are in this world, they go out and they leave a situation where there is safety and where they are growing and learning all just to be in the world because in their minds all they see is the desire to be free, this desire to be on their own and so ultimately there is a premature leaving and then also a ruin that is there. And then socially, we look at it socially and this company that we keep, oftentimes we, we look at individuals and we want to be a part of this surrounding that we think uh, consists of these individuals and, and we often align ourselves with people who really are not good for us and, and really are not conducive of a Christian life and yet because of our desire and our longings, we pursue things socially, the folk that we want to hang around and the places even that we want to frequent and the places that we want to go. And even sometimes our reaction to things or to something or to someone, we, without the proper knowledge, we just have a certain desire to carry out something and then what do we do? That desire causes us to act in a way that is not one in accordance to knowledge and not in accordance to wisdom. This way is certainly not new. Again, the writer, he wrote this thousands of years ago, and it's not new to our time, but with the rapidity of, of quick, viral information. You know, we don't often, when we even try to get the proper knowledge, we often don't strive to work in it and to get all that we can. We may get just tidbits because we live in a society where you can just go on the internet and just get a little information, and a lot of times we just get just a little bit. We want to do this particular thing so we, we do a little bit of research and then we are on our way because our mind is set on acquiring these things. And even in the church, even in the church, knowledge is not valued oftentimes. But knowledge in every aspect of the Christian's life, whether it's in worship, whether it is in our everyday living and our expression to God, knowledge ought to be valued in the life of the Christian. And so I want to just share with you just two points and then the lesson will be yours. Number one, from this proverb, from this proverb, understand that the local believers should pursue knowledge when planning. The local church and the local believers should pursue knowledge whenever there are plans uh, being made. Now going back to, and if you would, go to 2 Samuel chapter number 6. We want to look at a, a few things here before we give you the lesson. But in 2 Samuel chapter number 6, again, this really entails David and, and David's really presumptuous spirit. And the Bible describes in 2 Samuel how, how David uh, understands that for at least about 50 years, approximately at least, however, 50 years, the Ark of the Covenant was in Kirith-Jerim. 
It was not uh, in, in Jerusalem, and David had this desire, he had a mind to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem because it represented the presence of God. And so David, he went out and he had this desire, this longing, and so he pursued to do this very thing. The Bible describes how when David pursues it, he finds that this is in the house of Abinadab. And so as King David desires to please the Lord in bringing it back to Jerusalem, he even placed it on a new cart and he used two oxen. And so the Bible describes in 2 Samuel chapter number 6 that David and the people of Israel, they are just filled with joy. They are just overjoyed with, with all of these things and that the, the ark is coming back to Jerusalem and that they are able to, to bring this about and to bring this to fruition. David and the people, they dance and they, they play music, but while on the way, the Bible says, when they come into the threshold, look at verses 6 through 11, because the Bible describes that something with great calamity happens. It says, when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there because he reached out his hand to the ark. And he died there beside the ark of God. David was angry because the Lord had burst forth with an outburst upon Uzzah. So the place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day. He was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how can the ark of the Lord come into my care. So he's contemplating some things. So David was unwilling to take the ark of the Lord into his care in the city of David. Instead, David took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. See, we, what we have to understand is really at this point, David wants nothing to do at all with the ark. After all of these happenings, he's afraid. The Bible said he's a, afraid of God. But God is teaching David a powerful lesson, a lesson that really is for all of God's people, and that is this, is that God cannot be approached in a casual fashion. God cannot be approached in just a flippant fashion. The reality is, is that again, without the proper knowledge of God, sometimes something that is very wrong can seem harmless or even good to us. Let me say that again. See, when we don't have the proper knowledge of a thing, when God has supplied us with the knowledge and the ability to know what his will is, sometimes without that knowledge, something that is extremely wrong, something that is powerfully stated in God's word because we lack knowledge with our own reasoning it may seem that it's good it may seem that it's harmless but in reality in reality it's not in accordance to God's will I, again I want you to just briefly just notice the jubilation notice the joy that the people are expressing they thought that God was pleased the reason why they're dancing and playing music is because without this knowledge they thought that they were doing a good thing they thought that they were pleasing God. They thought that heaven also was rejoicing. They thought that God was commending them because of this effort. But God is not pleased. Just simply put, he's not pleased simply because we're trying. That's not the realities. When God has given us knowledge, we have to take that effort and we have to have knowledge with it. God gave strict, specific instructions about who? He gave instructions about how the ark was to be moved, how it was to be touched, who was to handle it. God gave all of this in, the, <clears throat> excuse me, in Numbers chapter 4. And David had the ability to seek the mind of God and to know these things. Now we, we have Jesus, and it's important to understand this. And through him we have God's grace. It's what was read, Bob read to us in terms of God's grace in Romans chapter 5. It talks about when we were powerless, God has extended his grace. In John chapter 1, grace upon grace we have. And God's grace, it indeed is abundant for us and to us. This is the reason why when we do such things, lacking knowledge that God does not immediately deal with us the way that he did with Uzzah, it's because of Christ Jesus. 
But it doesn't mean that we should just simply say that it doesn't matter how we relate and what we do in terms of God's will. We, we shouldn't have that attitude anyway. In, in other words, because God's grace, because of his love, because of his son, it ought to inspire us to want to please him by doing things what? God's way and in the fashion that God has demanded and called us to do. So we say to you today, when we, when we talk and when we strive to do God's will, let us make sure that we, that we strive to do that. Not because we are necessarily afraid that God will, will punish us on the spot, but because we, we have a, a, a healthy reverence for God and we, we love him and we want to please him in all that is said in, in everything that we do. That even in our own desires, that our desires will not be solely what we long for, but that with this desire and with our longings and with our aim, that as every individual is here, that we strive to do what? That we strive to, to apply this desire with knowledge, the proper knowledge of God's will in all that we say and all that we do. This is what we find here. And then finally, remember that from this passage and from what the writer of Proverbs is implies that our problems, when we really circumvent and really ignore the knowledge of God that has been given to us, our problems and our ruin, they're not God's fault. They're not God's fault. Again, look at the third verse of Proverbs 19. He says, one's own folly leads to ruin, yet the heart rages against the Lord. You look at David. David because of his own rushing in, because his, his feet were swift to fulfill his own desire. Even though he, he wanted to do this for God without this knowledge, this man of God without this knowledge, he hurried to do this. When, when God taught him this lesson, David was, was taken aback and he was afraid. And, and even there was some, some trepidation for David in his life. So we have to understand that, that when these things happen, when we choose things without seeking God's knowledge and without seeking God's understanding and his will. And when ruin happens or when things don't turn out the way that we want them to, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in religious matters, whatever it is, that it's not God's fault. It's not God. When God has given us all that we need that pertains to life and pertains to godliness, we ought to strive to know concerning the thing what all that we need to know. It's not even enough to just get a little knowledge. We need to get all of God's knowledge and all of God's will for us to be successful. So if you hear this glorious Lord's Day morning, and first and foremost, if you have not obeyed the gospel, we want to urge you to obey the gospel today through faith, through repentance, confession, being baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. God promises upon your obedience to the gospel that on that day when he receives his own to himself, that he will give you the crown of life that no man can take away provided you walk faithfully unto death. If this is your desire to be saved, to have your sins washed away, but much more importantly, if you're willing to accept that this is your need, won't you please come, whether you're listening virtually or whether you're in this audience, if you have not obeyed the gospel, won't you obey the gospel today? Again, through faith, repentance, confession, and being baptized into Christ, immersed and the watery grace of baptism for the remission of your sins. And if you are a Christian, you need to come. For the reasons that we spoke of or anything else, why don't you come right now? While we all together stand and while we all sing.
very important that uh, where they reside and where they live is um, that there are certain things indicative of that uh, residence. They uh, write, uh, please pray for our apartment managers. The manager is trying to catch the people who are smoking. They have sent warning. They are working with the Gordons. And, uh, they're, these people are not listening and they're also lying. Kenny and Sally, they express that they're praying for these individuals in here, that they get caught in their praying. They're asking that we pray with them. So if you would, go with me to our Heavenly Father prayer. Again, Father, we thank you and we praise you for blessing us to be here today, Lord, to be able to experience all of the, the glories of your presence and your worship. We thank you for the opportunity to come and to make our petitions known to you in prayer, Lord, because you care about us and we come on behalf and with our brother and sister, uh, Kenny and Sally Gordon, and we pray, Lord, that for all uh, that they're experiencing and dealing with in their home, Lord, that you would just the first and foremost, Lord, to uphold them and to, to, to keep them strong, Lord, spiritually, and help them to, uh, to be mindful of, of your will and your way always, and to, to strive to please you and glorify you, Lord, while they strive to 
to do things in accordance to, to the rules of their apartment, Lord, and, and uh, under the, the guidance and the authority of the managers. We pray for the managers that they will treat all of the individuals in the apartments the same, and including our brother and our sister, and that they will vigorously pursue those who uh, are doing things that are uh, hurting and, and bringing down the health of our beloved sister Sally. We pray, Lord, that we will keep our family in mind and that we will continue to pray for them, dear Father, and that, again, that you just keep them strong through this whole ordeal. And everyone, that, anyone that is here, Lord, that had a desire to come up and to ask for prayers or that is struggling with something, Lord, that for whatever reason did not do so, we pray, Lord, that you would give them space and time uh, until the next time that they can come, Lord, and, and, and to petition you for help. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Whomever's dismissing, if you would, come up and dismiss him. And I guess we're going to visit for a little bit and then we'll come back to the meeting. I think that's how Let us bow our heads for our closing prayer today. Heavenly Father, may our worship be acceptable before you. Let the peace that surpasses all understanding be with us always as we leave this place today. Help us to make a difference in the world this week. Um, let our words and actions align with your word. Help us to practice what we have learned here today Bless us as we leave this place and help us to be a blessing to everyone that we meet and interact with. Help us to never forget that with us always, you are with us always. In Jesus' name we pray.